Hey, good afternoon. It's Michael Lipinski again. I have a meeting this evening, so I have to try to get through this really, really fast. I'm trying to just to see um, you know, this educational assessment on my end and your end, and just trying to get it um, well within the time constraints that I'm under and see how much I can get done. Because uh, again, the city's opening up next week. All right, so I went back a little bit because we need to discuss something. Before using work sets to organize linked models, um, we really should d double check. Um, we discuss pinning. And pinning is a real huge thing, right? And it could be a pain in the butt. Pinning is a pain in the butt. But we really need to reiterate and drill home this linking files with work sharing uh, scenario. Because it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. And if, if, you, if you, you just go and shoot from the hip, and you blam, you open your big fat mouth, and you don't think it through, and then there's gonna be some ramifications down, down the road, and you don't want that. No one wants that, right? So, um, again, I, I went back and I did a little uh, research and did some more uh, plugging away to make sure that uh, I'm in well, you know, well within the, my faculties, so I wouldn't steer you down the wrong path. I, I don't wanna do that. He just died for invitation, but deliver us from Eve. <laughs> um, in any event, I got this office uh, ambiance going in the background. I, I really should turn it down a little bit. The office is a little loud. Shut your fucking mouth! Can't you fucking see? I'm trying to fucking work, assholes! You want to pull records? Let's just turn this down a little bit. They're loud. It's a loud office. Ah, oh, it's much better. They're all good people. All right. So, let's just keep that down to a, a, a dull roar, shall we? All right, so, dull roar. Now, this is perplexing. This can be so perplexing to anybody. Um, and, and it's still, to a certain extent, perplexing to me. So that's why I got to perplex before I do. So I relax a little bit. Because there's going to be a lot for you to take in on this one. This is Building Information Modeling 360, 360. Turning your life around, too. Uh, and uh, again, I had issues, man. I had some issues. But I'll tell you, if you, if you, uh, if you strive for perfection, or not perfection, but if you, if you strive to raise the bar a little bit for yourself, you'll find that you may be able to raise the bar for others. And that's, my kids don't fucking feel that way. My kids are like, who are you to, look at your teeth. How can you possibly know anything about anything? Look at my dad. And they're absolutely right. And it's no one else's fault but my own. So that being said, let's, let's get back into this linking files and with work sharing. I just wanted to read through this verbatim and, um, and then we'll get, and I'll start doing some exercises with you. I pick things up, I put them down. If you are using linked Revit models where one or more of the project files have work sharing enabled, there are a few guidelines to follow as well as some tangible benefits such as linked visibility control between work sets. Be sure to read more about work sharing in Chapter 5, collaborating with a team before continuing with this section. When you are linking work sharing enabled files from consultants, you will first need to decide whether you need to maintain the work sets in the linked files. It's important, we reiterate that. You will first need to decide whether you whether you need to maintain the work sets in the linked files. Even though you may not have direct access to your consultant's servers, the software will attempt to reconcile the location of each project model's central file locations. Location. We recommend handling each received project file using one of the following options. Open the project using the detach from central option. Choose preserve work sets and then save the project as a new central file on your server. Refer to Chapter 5 for specific instructions on this process. Open the project using the Detach from Central option. Choose Discard Work Sets and then save the file. That might not be the best course of action, but it, it'll give you a fresh palette. It'll give you a fresh palette. And then save the file. If your team decides to disable work sets and linked files received from consultants, 
you will avoid any problems related to the central file not being found. However, you will not be able to extend workset visibility settings into the linked files or use worksets to selectively load content from the linked model into your host model. If you preserve, and it'll slow you down. And, and time is of the essence. Architecture is the study of time and what little time we really have to accomplish this. These are mere mortals that we're talking about. They can't attain this level of expertise up here on Mount Olympus with us holier than thou. If you preserve work sets, you can continue to use work sets in the linked model to your advantage. For example, when you link, you forget. When you link, you forget. I'm just don't lie. When you first link a work sharing enabled model into your project, you can use the specific option associated with the open button in the import link RVT dialog box, as shown in figure 6.1. Now, right, you can preserve the work, you can work and specify whatever work set you want, and you can have all of them open. But you, it, it, it helps to set your project up, uh, enabling work sets for that to happen. You have to enable work sharing and set up some work sets. Now, anytime throughout the development of the project, you can adjust the loaded work sets from linked files very easily from the Manage tab or the Insert tab in the ribbon. Click the Manage Links button in the Manage Links dialog box, select one of the linked RVT files, and if it is a work sharing enabled file, click the Manage Work Sets button to open the Work Sets dialog box. We describe this process in greater detail in the next section of this chapter. In addition to the work set loading control, you can apply visibility settings automatically to linked models. As long as the work sets in any linked files are named exactly as they are in the host file. For example, if you linked a model that had the default work set named shared levels and grids, and your host model also had the same work set, you can hide the work set in both the host and linked model in one step. Open the Visibility Graphics Overrides dialog box, select the Work Sets tab, and then set Shared Levels and Grids to Hide. You will see that any datum objects assigned to that work set in either the host or linked model are hidden. You do not need to perform a separate vis visibility override on the linked file. Although the automated visibility linking of work sets can be beneficial, it can also be problematic when you need to coordinate content between the host and linked models. In the same scenario described previously, what if you wanted to share levels and grids work set to be visible on the host model, but hidden in the linked model? This is common when you are coordinating data objects between architectural engineering models. The grids and levels from a linked model should be visible for use with the coordination monitoring tools described in this chapter, but then the linked references might need it to be hidden. In this case, you might choose to access manage work sets buttons discussed earlier and close the shared levels and grids work set in the linked file. You could also adjust the linked view, however, this would require you to adjust every view in which the linked model appears. We discussed linked views in greater detail in Chapter 18, Documenting Your Design. Now, let's hold that thought. Just let that sink in really deep, because now I'm going to just show you what, in, 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 graphically, a picture is worth a thousand words, is the old adage. A picture is worth a thousand words. This didn't come easy. This didn't come easy. I can tell you that much. Okay, so what the heck did I just say? Well, I said that the structure is detached. The structure drawing that we create is detached. And so is the architectural drawing. It's detached. I detached it from central. Ow! And I just blasted my knee out on this donated, gorgeous, gorgeous desk that someone was so nice to leave in their garbage. If you only could see what I'm, what this, this workstation that I got going here, let me tell you, it is beautiful. It's beautiful. In any event, it's a beautiful workstation. All right, so what did I do? Well, I, I, I created a new, a new model, and I called it CO6 Shared Points Electronic Ignition Time, RVT. And it's an electrical template, default out of the box. And in the lighting plan, I created, uh, I went to uh, systems, and I went to lighting fixture, I'm sorry, I went to component, and I created a, 
a pioneer radio, <laughs> oh, a newfangled radio. <laughs> I rubbed two sticks together. I, I took two cans and I, I put a string on one and a string on the other, like the rest of these tin can gangsters do. I'm just emulating from the pros. Now, this recess, this hi-hat, uh, obviously extends into the ceiling. So lighting plays an important part in beam coordination, especially if these compounds in compound ceilings and soffits and plenums um, uh, 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 with acoustical ceiling tiles and, and, and the black iron and all that. And it, it can be very, very difficult as these things shift around. And, and you, anyone knows anything about uh, uh, acoustical ceiling tiles. You can't have one side cut six inches, the other side cut three inches and look up because it looks ridiculous. Sure, it serves its purpose, but it's not contractual, contractually compliant. And if it was me, I'd tell them to rip it down. Right? I would say I wouldn't have no problem telling a contractor to tear that down and redo it because they made a mistake. And I can imagine it would blow their stack. It might blow their stack. Stack overflow. But I would say, as a matter of fact, they might try and kill me later on down the road if I cost them thirty thousand dollars. They may follow me around looking for my assets, try to seize everything that I got. You know, oh yeah, you're gonna lean on me. Don't lean on me, man. You can't afford the ticket down in Suffragette City. That's what David Bowie said over by the cast iron stove building right by the Holland Tunnel. All right, so what did I do? Yeah, I did that in 3D. You want to see it in 3D? Well, there it is. It's real uh, It's it's real stupid. But I don't know. Let's make it there. Now it's, now it's bigger. I don't know how big it is. It's big. Let's see. I don't know how big it is. How big is it? I don't want to measure it. I'm, I'm too tired. Oh, hold on. I'll measure it. I'll measure it. Hold on. All right, so that's uh, that's a uh, hold on a second, hold on. I'm gonna measure it because we have some time. It's about 10, 10, 10, 7, and 1730 seconds, something like that. Yeah, it's about that. Okay, so let's just get this down to a normal size. I'll go down to like that. That's a little, yeah, that's a little better. All right, so again, it's a, it's a recessed can. This is three-dimensional text, easily accessible from the toolbar, model text. And you just type in whatever text you want, blah, blah, blah. And you change the material of the text. You change the material of it for your, your, for your, for your signs on your buildings. I don't have many materials loaded. You take a picture of what you want from Home Depot and say, I want that sign to look like that. You know, I want it to look like brick. You know, I want it to look like brick. I don't have the view resolution to show it has a real brick, but it'll have the pattern. All right, so I'm just, just showing you that. Now, what else did I do here? What else did I do? Well, like I said, I went back into the structural detached, right? And I ensured that the work sets were created and I created it as a central model. I detached it as a central model, went back in I created all these work sets, and then what I did was I emulated the work sets in, in this project. I emulated the work sets in this project, and I'll tell you why. Because I own them here, but my other digital twin doesn't. My digital twin doesn't own those work sets. Because if I go to the structure detached, as you can see, I can't even manage the work sets anymore. Because, oh, it's, because it's not loaded, right? It's not loaded, remember? I haven't loaded it yet. And the architectural drawing was also, um, kept, it kept getting orphaned. So what did I do? I went back into the structural and I set this to be uh, uh, an attachment as, uh, as opposed to an overlay. So that allowed it to stop being orphaned and not appear in the projects as I was progressing with the projects. What else couldn't I do? Well, I couldn't do a few other things. So what I found was I, I found solutions for that in the last 51 years, I kept trying to find solutions for the things that I couldn't do. Right. So, um, that was alleviated. Now, it wants me to quit smoking. So now, what else did I do? Well, I didn't create any work sets in, in the architectural model. Um, I didn't put everything on one work set. Um, what I did do was I did assign certain things to cer certain work sets. I did assign certain things to certain work sets. So, 
I'm hesitant to load the architectural right now, but I'm going to reload. I'm just going to reload the structural real quick. It's loaded into another document. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's, that's no good. Well, there it is. Well, there's the, um, there's the structural document. You don't see the architectural in there because I have it turned off in the view. In the view. Have we just discussed this? In the view of visibilities, Revit links, work sets. Okay. It's not shown. Um, now, I'm not going to get into that. But that's because it's not loaded. It's not loaded. If I reload it, you'll see it's here. Now, I also drew in a new foundation in the uh, upper left quadrant or sector of this particular uh, model. Now, okay, that being said, if I went to view and I went to visibility graphics and I went to work sets and Revit links, I could hide that visibility of the uh, architectural model real quick, right? That's a lot quicker than having to turn things on and off because you don't want to see them, you know, a lot easier. But in addition to that, what I did was I also, and I have to close this now, I want to save, uh, I want to save this change. No, I don't want to save the change. Yeah, I'll save the change. God forbid I don't. Because in the model, I kept having to upgrade from 2015 to 2018, 2018 to 2020. I rectified that. So now, now that we can see that, I'm just going to reload. I'm going to reload from right mouse clicking in the project manager. I'm going to reload. Uh, okay, we lost our, uh, we lost Wi-Fi. Now, as you can see, you don't see the architectural, but you do see the foundation. Notice how it's extending below. Oops. You can see the, the edge, the slab edge. And I drew two foundation walls over here. Now, what, what am I trying to convey to you here? What am I trying to convey? Well, well, in this view, you can see the architectural plan, right? Now, the, the key to this is the fact that I can now control the visibility of the work sets because they, sh they share the same work sets. They share the same work sets. So now on level three, on, on work set three, I had, I had, cre I put the, this arc grid, this arc grid, I put it on work set three. So now let's go back up to visibility. Now that was just the work sets here. If I go up to manage, and I go to manage links, and I go to structure detached, and I go to manage work sets, well, you'll see that they're not editable, but they're the same work sets, but they are the same work sets, shared levels and grids, um, work set one, and then I, did, I created work set one through 10. Now, why did I do that? Well, because if I was to go to vi visibility graphics, like we discussed in the same cha the chapter before this, if I was to go to visibility graphics and I was to go to work sets and I was to say, let's turn off work set one. Now, anything I created in any of those models, anything that I created in my model that's on work set one, anything the architect created in their model that was on work set one, and anything that the, um, that the electrician or the, the you know, the... Um, the entity had created within its work set had indeed also created it on work set one. Well, then I could then hide it, show it or hide it. So if I hide it, I hit apply. Anything that was on work set, so work set one is gone. It, now I, I put the recess can, hold on, the recess can is on work set 10. The, uh, the arc grid line is on work set 10. This hi-hat is on, uh, the text is shown. It's not on a work set right now. Oh, sorry, it's on work set 10. But notice the uh, the text isn't. The text, it doesn't, it's not on a work, because we didn't remember with the annotation, linking in the annotation. So that's, I know that was a lot of stuff to read. It was a lot of stuff to read. But that's uh, basically what I did. 
to get it to conform to the way the text um, indeed uh, and the software indeed is designed to perform. And that's important so that you don't spend your time fumbling through view templates and, 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 and visibility graphic pull downs um, looking to turn things on and off um, based on their model category. Because you may need to coordinate the grids from the architect, structural engineer, and your grid as well. Right? If, if you're megaring up a building and you, you do want to see uh, certain things and you don't want to see certain things, then you'll have the ability to do that. Well, well what, what else could I do having that set up that way? Well, there's a few things I could do um, now that I have that set up this way. I could go back up here. I could turn this back. Uh, I could, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. I go back up to visibility graphics overrides. Hold on, view, visibility graphics, and go to work sets. Now, I could turn on, let me turn this back on, let me show. Let me use global visibility settings. Or I could just show it. Hit apply. Hit OK. But now I can go to the manage links. I can go to manage. I can go to manage links. I can hit structure detached. Manage work sets. I could close certain things. I could close. Let me show you what I could close before I do it. I can close certain work sets that are on the linked model. I, I can't necessarily uh, manipulate them. I, I shouldn't say that because I am going to be manipulating them. But I can switch them on and off by closing them. And that depends on what work set they're on. And I, like I said, I didn't go into the architectural model and, and close everything that was on the architectural model. I, uh, or I didn't go into the architectural model and assign things to different work sets. Uh, I did do it in the structural model, but I, I didn't do it in the architectural model. So I just want to show you that I can, I can indeed change some of the visibility settings um, with the link model from my host model. And, and, and that's the beauty of this. You, there's so many ways to manipulate to get the information that you want to be represented to help you uh, design. So, you know, one way, I mean, I could just... I could detach it. I could, I could actually control the visibility just from the Revit link. I could change the visibility setting based by the link view, the custom view, like we discussed earlier. I could go back up to work sets and I could either, sh I could shut off, I could show work set one, hit apply. Well, there's the foundation again, right? I could go back up to this view, visibility, I can go to work sets. I could go to say Revit links. I could do it in this view. I could, there's so many different ways at which you could turn things on and off. And, and that's the important part of this. So let me just do one last thing. Let me go to, um, visibility graphics. Hold on one more time. I'll do some one last thing. I want to go to work set, um, work sets, Revit links. I want to go to by host view. I want to go be by linked view. And I want to go to, now I'm going to go to custom. I want to do what they said we did before. Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. I know what, I know what it is. Hold on. Did in custom. By host view, custom model categories, custom. And I want to turn off the furniture. And I want to turn off the furniture systems. And I want to turn off the casework. Remember from the last exercise? Casework. Hit apply. Okay. Apply. Okay. And now the furniture's gone. We don't need any of that stuff just yet, right? This is an electrical plan. We need to put some conduit in this sucker, right? We need, we need a fiber optic feed, or two, we need a service and protect feed. So let's get some conduit in this puppy. We got some schedule 40, uh, it's north and south. Let's if we're in Manhattan. Let's say we're gonna come up from the, well, again, the furniture showed in this view, but we need to get fiber to this library. And I don't know, this looks like a good place right here. I'm just gonna bring 
I'll bring it from the end of this. Uh, I'll bring it from here. And we're going to do subsurface. I'm going to come around to the front door. It's a single line. I'm going to bring it up to this location here. I'm going to 90 over. I'm going to 40. I'm going to 30 over. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to uh, say that I screwed up and hit escape and undo. Because I didn't set the elevation in my rush to get this done. I didn't set the elevation. Got to remember, we're not going to see this, remember? It's negative 36 inches. We're not going to see it when we draw it. Because the cut plane is not set correctly. I'm going to bring it all the way up to grid line F. Right shy of grid line F. Yeah, I know it's not shown. That's because our cut plane isn't set. I'm going to bring it over to here. And we're going to come up on the wall to maybe a, a node. And I'm going to come up to say, I'm going to come up to seven, I'm going to come up to six foot, six. Six foot, six inches. Tab and hit apply. And there it is. So let me just go to this view and change the cut plane, the view range. So look down, unlimited, real quick. Hit OK. Well, there's the conduit. I'm not too thrilled with the way it looks, but there it is. So there's our conduit. There's our conduit coming up, stubbing up in the library. That's the service side. The protect side, none of my business. I eat Vienna sausages from the dollar store. <laughs>